Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. I would like to ask you to consider a question. What are the words you hope that you never hear come out of your doctor's mouth? <laughs> most, most people would say, I'm sorry to tell you you have cancer. That's what most people fear. And there are others that uh, are similar. What I'm tr going to try to do is to give you some uh, information and insight how to greatly reduce the possibility that uh, you'll hear that come out of your doctor's mouth. So uh, I always have to begin my lectures by stating that I'm not talking with my Texas MD license. Texas doesn't allow physicians to speak about things that aren't standard of care medicine. So I'm speaking with my Arizona license. So, um, I guess that's my phone making all the noise, huh? I don't know what that's all about because I turned it off. Anyway, um, so question would be, come up, you know, why should you believe some of the things I'm going to tell you? And that's a reasonable question. And just to try to answer that, I've been biohacking since 1965 and I've done a few things as you see here. I've also been validated by a variety of national and international organizations who have been kind enough to honor me for my contributions to medicine. Uh, one of the great surprises was to get a call from uh, the Vatican to see if I would accept the Order of St. Sylvester, which is, has some similarities to a Nobel Prize, which really stunned me because, uh, first of all, I was surprised to be uh, recognized, but also I'm not a Catholic, so I'm really honored for that. So it's difficult to change people's paradigms, particularly about medicine in a matter of 20 minutes, but let's give it a go. So to just to give you some background about my journey, I'm trained as an ophthalmologist, did, uh, had a lot of fun doing ophthalmology. I did a lot of uh, great uh, and fun things, including cataract surgery, uh, plastic uh, surgery, et cetera. But one of the things I did was the, uh, the majority of the research for the laser that's used in LASIK surgery. But what we didn't know at the time was that the, that the uh, laser wouldn't kill viruses. And I used it to carve the scar off of a fellow that had leukemia. It didn't kill the viruses, but those came in and went through my mask and into my nose and into my brain. So I developed encephalitis. So the following seven years or so, I spent about 16 hours uh, a day sleeping in bed. Had two or three hours a day in which I could understand a newspaper and then like a light switch, it'd go off and I couldn't understand it anymore. So these two dogs uh, knew what was going on. By the way, I also developed a bleeding disorder. So Tigger, the brown dog, would sleep on my head where I had viruses in my brain and poo would curl up next to my spleen that was killing my platelets. So I consider these two dogs the original biomodulators. <laughs> now, um, my journey uh, began with me doing very well. I had uh, a great life, uh, everything that one could wish for in the American dream. But then slowly over time, I just began to fade away not understanding what was happening to me, except I got to the places I mentioned to you where uh, I could see a patient and figure out what was wrong with them, but I couldn't remember how to write a prescription. Also, I developed spastic movements of sort of like that, which doesn't work really well if you're operating inside somebody's eyeball. And so you can see what, uh, what I look like uh, during those years and then what has happened to me over the following years. And so uh, in June of this year, I'll be 83. So even though the doctors told me that I would cash it in sometime in 95, I've uh, been able to prove them wrong. So I'm going to try to share with you some of the things that I figured out along the way to get myself well and spent the last 25 years helping others get well. Now, the important thing to recognize is the body is a human electronic device. And all of electronic devices, particularly portable ones, require a battery system. And so the major batteries in our body turned out to be our muscles. Now our muscles are piezoelectric. So what does that funny word mean? Uh, if you take a piece of quartz and you squeeze it with a pair of pliers, then it emits electrons. And that, that is called piezoelectricity. So every time you move your muscles, you're generating electrons. But also our muscles are rechargeable batteries. And so the, the electrons you generate with exercise end up uh, being stored in, in your muscles. Now. Um, our muscles are actually then stacked in a very specific order like stacking batteries in a flashlight. 
to form a power pack. So every organ in the body has its own battery pack. And a stack of muscle batteries is what's been called an acupuncture meridian. So cells are designed to run at 25 millivolts. And when you, they get injured or wear out, then you need 50 millivolts to make new cells. And so the problem then is if you don't have that voltage, then cells don't work and things don't get replaced. So here's just an example of one of the circuits called the spleen circuit. You see the muscle starts down in the feet, goes up the legs, goes to the female genitalia, goes around the back and gets the adrenal glands, the spleen and the pancreas, goes up into the neck and makes a loop and eventually hooks into what's called the stomach circuit. So the spleen stomach is the same circuit, it's just the one that goes up is named spleen, the one that comes back down is named stomach. So we have six of these loops of muscle batteries that provide the power for all of the organs. Now, one of the things that's important to recognize is it's well known in battery technology that if you take a rechargeable battery and you drain it to zero, it flips itself upside down as far as polarity is concerned. And if you take a battery and stick it upside down in a battery charger, it won't take a charge. Well, it, and that's exactly what happens in all chronic disease. One or more of your muscle battery packs flips its polarity because it drained its power all the way to zero. So when that begins, it begins two separate distinct processes as, that lead you into various kinds of illnesses. So all chronic disease begins when you flip the polarity in one of your muscle battery packs. So the, that whatever organs are on that system no longer have power. So for example, if you come home and you go and open the fridge and it's hot in there, you go in the living room and the TV won't turn on and you go into the bedroom and the lamp won't turn on, what happened? You flipped a breaker, right? Well, you do pretty much the same thing in the human body, uh, except instead of flipping the circuit breaker, you simply flip the polarity in your battery pack and then whatever organs are on that system no longer have the ability to run correctly because they don't have 25 millivolts and they can't keep themselves repaired because they don't have 50 millivolts. So let's take an example of a heart. Let's say a heart a muscles wear out then over and don't get replaced because the heart circuit doesn't have 50 millivolts. Then gradually you're gonna have fewer cells in the heart trying to do the job that heart needs to do and so your heart works less efficiently and eventually you end up with congestive heart failure. Now, this is true of essentially any organ. For example, in macular degeneration, the macula is on the stomach circuit. If you lose power in your stomach circuit, the macular cells wear out every 48 hours, so you keep losing more pixels and more pixels and more pixels, and pretty soon you can't see. That's macular degeneration, all because you flip the polarity in your stomach circuit. Now, most people, as they begin to go down this process, they begin to do exactly what I did. They just start feeling more tired. Oh, well, I'm getting older. Well, da, 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 da. And so they just kind of blow it off as well, that's life. But what really happens is the, one of the first things to go out is your immune system. So when your immune system goes out, you begin to get colds and flu and uh, pneumonia and Lyme disease and various infections. Then also you begin to get injuries. You begin cardiovascular diseases like heart attacks and strokes. And you can name almost any illness that you want that people, you would say, well, this is, these are one of the illnesses that people get. It all began because you flipped the polarity in its battery pack and can no longer keep that thing running or keep it repaired. Now, our, our joints are surrounded by six of these uh, circuits and they're balanced two by two, as you can see in the diagram. Here's the bone in the middle. And so the way the joint is, is uh, structurally strong is because you could think of this as having six bungee cords around a joint. The bungee cords keep it stable but allow it to bend. Now, cut one of the bungee cords and what happens? The opposite one over contracts, your joint goes sideways, it starts rubbing, gives you arthritis, but it's also susceptible to trauma, right? Because it's no longer strong, and so you hit it and boom, you've got an injury. Now, so you go along this pathway of gradually losing more and more voltage, and if something in the, and that doesn't kill you, a heart attack, stroke, or something else, then you begin to go down another cycle, and that has to do with lack of oxygen. So there is a relationship between voltage and oxygen. So for example, inside of our mitochondria of our cells, we have a rechargeable battery system called ADP, ATP. When the battery is charged up, it's called ATP, and that's the battery that provides the energy for the cell to work. As it gives up its electrons, it discharges and becomes a discharged battery called ADP. 
because it's a rechargeable battery system, we have to have a battery charger in there, and that battery charger is called the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle. Now, for every unit of fatty acid you put into the battery charger, if you have oxygen available, you get enough electrons to charge up 38 of these ADP batteries. If oxygen is diminished for every unit of fat you put into the uh, recharge system, you can only charge up two batteries. So it's like having a car that goes from 38 miles to the gallon to two miles to the gallon. So you can begin to see the relationship between uh, voltage and oxygen. Now, the next one that's important is called the Bohr effect or Bohr's law. Christian Bohr described this, and it's very important for you to understand it. When you put that gadget on your finger and it says that your oxygen saturation is, say, 98%, it tells you how much oxygen is hooked to your hemoglobin. It tells you nothing about how much oxygen is available for your tissue, by the way. So, but for it to attach to, onto the hemoglobin, you, it requires 34 millivolts in your heart circuit because it turns out that the part of the lungs where oxygen attaches the hemoglobin is on the same circuit as your heart. Now, if you don't have 34 millivolts, then you can put all the oxygen into your lungs that you want and it doesn't do any good because it cannot attach. We saw that happen during the past number of years with the, all the viral infections. People would go into the hospital and they say, oh, you're running at 70%. We're going to put you in ICU, put a tube down your throat, and blow, and blow oxygen in. Well, it did no good because they didn't have 34 millivolts. If they'd had 30 millivolts, they wouldn't be at 70%. So, for example, a friend of mine called and said, hey, I'm in the hospital and, uh, with uh, this problem, and they want to, to vaccinate me and put me in ICU, and I said no to both. So I said, well, it's good for you. You've got a biomodulator. Just put a patch on the, your wrist here, which is the heart point, and start pumping voltage into your heart circuit. The next day, his uh, saturation went from 70 to 80. Next day, went from 80 to 90. The next day, they sent him home. And now he's out hiking in the Utah mountains without any oxygen. So again, we lost so many people just because the physicians forgot about the Bohr effect that of, uh, you simply have to have voltage in the heart circuit. Otherwise, intubation does no harm, or no good at all and mostly harm. Now, our red blood cells then carry the voltage out, uh, uh, the uh, oxygen out to the tissue, but for it to come loose, the, vo the voltage has to drop to 11 millivolts. Otherwise, if it stays at 34 millivolts, it just keeps circulating around your system and the body can't use it. Even though this might say 98%, you may be significantly uh, different in your tissue because you, it won't come loose. So how does the body normally fix that? Well, inside of our red blood cells, we have a system called the carbonic acid buffering system. And what it does is it takes the carbon dioxide that cells make from metabolism and using bicarbonate converts it to hydrogen. That hydrogen is capable of dropping the voltage from 34 millivolts to 11 millivolts so the oxygen comes loose and now the cells can use it. Now, one of the problems is that our kidneys make the bicarbonate and most people past the age of 40, our kidneys can't make enough. So we began to have less oxygen available, even though this may say 98%, your tissue has less and less oxygen available. And that's a significant part of the aging process and also the getting sick process. Now, there have been a lot, there's been a lot of work done recently, uh, in public studies published about the effects of using what's called Brown's gas, which is a, a device that splits water into oxygen and hydrogen. And so now you have the hydrogen that bypasses this system so the oxygen will come loose from your uh, hemoglobin and also you have oxygen available. So uh, this has become a, a great therapeutic modality uh, that more and more people are recognizing. Now, we have surrounding us a, a scalar field, a scalar energy field uh, that is in the form of what's called a bitorus. You can see that there's energy coming from the universe down into the heart and from the earth up into the heart. And so the heart gets charged from this but significant is that because of the rotation of this uh, uh, by torus, it causes the body to have a change in polarity. Now, by the way, as far as this uh, system of, of having enough oxygen, one of the most important things people can do to stay well is to take a quarter teaspoon of baking soda every day because it helps restore the, the functionality of your system so you have more oxygen. So people think, oh, it's just baking soda. Well, surprisingly enough, baking soda is one of the most effective ways to keep you uh, young and keep you well. This is the device that splits uh, water into uh, uh, oxygen and hydrogen, and we found it extremely effective. So again, 
we have, as we start the process, if we don't uh, die from the, uh, these uh, standard illnesses and we start going down this process, we start losing oxygen. Now, one of the things that happens next is a fungus shows up. Now, the relationship became, between cancer and fungus was popularized by Tullio Simoncini, a Roman oncologist. Now, he noticed that any time you look at a, at a tumor, if you get, can actually see the tumor, it's covered with fungus. And so he believed the fungus caused it. He was wrong about that, but he certainly credit for popularizing the relationship between the two. And here you can see that every living thing, whether it's a human, an animal, or a plant, contains fungal spores. And as long as the oxygen levels are normal, then the uh, fungus stays in the spore form. But when that leaf falls off the tree and loses its foliage and oxygen, it switches over to a, an actual fungus, which puts out toxins uh, and enzymes to dissolve that thing. So the reason we have uh, fungus in us and everything else is to turn dead or dying organic material to dirt. If we didn't have that, we'd all be over our eyeballs and dead animals and dead leaves. So whether it's a plant, whether it's an animal that died in the forest, the role of fungus is to turn it to dirt. Now let's say you lose the voltage and oxygen in your liver. The fungus is gonna to try to learn, turn your liver to dirt. It doesn't know and doesn't care that the rest of you is okay. It's doing what it was designed to do, turn your liver to dirt. Now, here you can see a breast cancer that's exuding through the breast. Now while you look at it up close, you see the fungus on it, see the white, uh, uh, candida all over the tumor. And so uh, that's just what happens as you get there. Now, one of the interesting things is we've been working with a lot of ALS patients and all of them have the liver gallbladder circuit out. And so what is happening in ALS in my belief is that the, uh, the liver circuit has lost its voltage and thus uh, it's lost its oxygen. And so fungus is turning the spinal cord to dirt. And so that makes it much easier to recognize what's going on and how to fix it. Now, uh, so we need to look at cancer because that's the end result of, uh, of all chronic disease if you don't die from something else first. So the theory about cancer uh, began um, with um, this guy, Bovary, who said that cancer's uh, due to uh, mutated genes. And so the therapy that we have been using since 1902 is based on that theory. So we cut it out and throw it away. We use chemotherapy and throw it, uh, or to try to destroy it, or use radiation. So how well is that working? Well, here's the data from the American Cancer Society from 1930 to 2019 that shows we're not any better at treating cancer than we were in 1930. That's for males, that's for females. And here's a study from the Australians that show that the Effectiveness of chemotherapy in extending five-year survival is 2.3% in Australia and 2.1% in the U.S. So chemotherapy fails us 98% of the time. The guy who got it right was uh, Mueller, who in 1838 said, no, it's due to stem cells. So here's uh, Thomas Seyfried, who uh, in Boston showed that cancer is not due to mutated genes. And I don't have time to tell you how he did that, but we'll just have to take the, your, the word for it for a moment that he's proven that, it, that mutated genes don't. So I began to notice years ago that in every case of illness, including cancer, that, um, they, that the power supply in the, whatever organ was failing or whatever organ had cancer, it flipped its polarity. And then I found that Keith Brewer, who was a, a, um, a, a physicist, also said, found the same thing was happening in the cells. So that, that normal cells run at 25 millivolts of electron donor, all cancer cells run at 30 millivolts of electron stealer. And so then you add to that the work that we've already talked about, Bohr, and then we get to the work of uh, Otto Warburg, who in 1931 got a Nobel Prize. And this is what he said. The cause of cancer is no longer a mystery. We know it occurs when any cell is denied 60% of its oxygen. Okay, powerful, huh? So obviously what happens is as you flip the polarity, you begin to use the, lose the oxygen, you start getting sicker and sicker, and then eventually when you've lost 60%, you always get cancer. And you only get cancer when you've lost 60% of the, of the uh, oxygen requirements of those cells. So what that does obviously is it makes it much easier to figure out how to treat all chronic disease. First of all, you've got to go back and turn the polarity of the 
of the muscle battery pack that went out, uh, flip it back up so that you can uh, recharge it. And so once it has power, then you simply come over here and begin to uh, restore the oxygen levels in the tissue and all this starts going back this direction. And pretty soon the body gets back to work. Remember that the body never forgets how to heal itself. The body never forgets how to heal. It needs voltage, it needs all the nutrients that it takes to make new cells, and, it, and you need to get rid of the toxins that damage cells as fast as you make them. So, I would just close by, since I'm out of time, and there's, I'm gonna fall through the floor up here, since I'm out of time, <laughs> uh, that it's important for you to learn how to check your own polarities. If you're driving from here to Chicago, how many times are you gonna look at your gas gauge? Well, how, if you're gonna live the rest of your life, how many times should you look at your personal gas gauges? So we have set up the ability, and I taught in the, in yesterday the class, I taught everybody how to check your own uh, circuits to know if they're off or on. And if they're off, we of course use the device called the biotransducer, which puts out scalar, which will flip the batteries back to normal. We use a, uh, then the device puts out electromagnetic energy uh, with handlebars and foot plates and recharge the circuits. And then we give people the complete nutrition that they need to make new cells and we start detoxing them. And um, I would point out by the way that at our clinic, we don't treat cancer. We just get your physiology back to normal. Whatever you do with your oncologist is up to you. So that's all I have time for today. So thank you for your attention. And if there's anything we can help you with, uh, Synergy has a booth outside and they're happy to demonstrate some of this to you. Yeah.